Let's begin by creating a data frame called emails using the read.csv function and loading up energybids.csv. And as always in the text analytics week, we're going to pass strings as factors equals false to this function. So we can take a look at the structure of our new data frame using the str function. We can see that there are 855 observations. This means we have 855 labeled emails in the data set. And for each one, we have the text of the email and whether or not it's responsive to our query about energy schedules and bids. So let's take a look at a few example emails in the data set, starting with the first one. So the first email can be accessed with emails, dollar sign email, and we'll select the first one. So while the output you get when you type this will just kind of depend on what operating system you're running on, many of you will see what I'm displaying here, which is a single line of text that we need to horizontally scroll to read through. This is a pretty tough way to read a long piece of text. So if you have this sort of display, you can use the str wrap function and pass it the long string you want to print out. In this case, emails, dollar sign, email, selecting the first one. And now we can see that this has broken down our long string into multiple shorter lines that are much easier to read. Okay, so let's take a look now at this email now that it's a lot easier to read. We can see just by parsing through the first couple of lines that this is an email that's talking about a new working paper the environmental challenges and opportunities in the evolving North American electricity market is the name of the paper. And it's being released by the Commission for Environmental Cooperation, or CEC. So while this certainly deals with electricity markets, it doesn't have to do with energy schedules or bids, so it is not responsive to our query. So we can take a look at the value in the responsive variable for this email using emails dollar sign responsive and selecting the first one and we have value zero there. So let's take a look at the second email in our data set. Again, I'm going to use the str wrap function. I'm going to pass it emails dollar sign email now selecting the second one. And kind of scrolling up to the top here, we can see that the original message is actually very short. It just says FYI for your information and most of it is a forwarded message. So we have all the people who originally received the message, and then down at the very bottom is the message itself, attached as my report prepared on behalf of the California State Auditor. And there's an attached report, CA report new .pdf. Now, our data set contains just the text of the emails and not the text of the attachments, but it turns out, as we might expect, that this attachment had to do with Enron's electricity bids in California and therefore is responsive to our query. And we can check this in the responsive variable. Emails dollar sign responsive, selecting the second value, and we see that that's a one. So now let's look at the breakdown of the number of emails that are responsive to our query using the table function. We're going to pass it emails responsive. And as we can see, the data set is unbalanced with a relatively small proportion of emails responsive to the query. And this is typical in predictive coding problems.